So, hello and welcome to lesson 3 in our study of mathematical methods 2. So, in lesson 3, we'll talk about tests for convergence, okay? And we have several of them. We have the ratio test, um, the um, P-series test, the comparison test, and what have you, okay? But we'll be talking about the P-series test and the comparison test. And I think if you understand this too, that should help you to be able to know whether any proper integral converges or diverges, okay? So we will start off with the P-series test, which is very, very simple. But what is the P-series? So the P-series, also known as the Kappa Harmonic Series or the Super Harmonic Series, it's an infinite series of the form you can see that here. Alright. Where our P is non negative, okay, and it is greater than zero, okay. So our P is um, greater than zero. So we can have the following to be examples of the P series, okay. So um, we have um, summation k starting from 1 to infinity 1 over k. So you can see here p is 1 here because it's power 1. Here, root of k is the same as k power half. And so p is half here. And here p is 2. Okay, so all these are examples of the p series. Okay. So now let's look at the convergence criterion. How we apply that to be able to tell whether a particular sequence converges or not. Okay, a particular integral converges or not. So let's consider this integral here. Where a is any real number? So a can be 1, 2, 3, 4, yes. Okay. So this integral here converges if p is greater than 1. So if this p here is greater than 1. And it diverges if p is between 0. But p is never 0 and 1. So p can be 1. So when p is between this interval, right? Okay. So let's use that concept to show which of the following proper integrals converge, okay? So let's take this first one. Does it converge or diverge? So you can see that here, the power here is one, so that means p is one. So p, since p is one here, it means this one will diverge. Because remember we said it diverges if p is in this interval. Here you can see p is equal to two here. So here it will what converge. Because you are saying that it converges if p is greater than 1. So, even without computing or evaluating this integral, I know it will diverge. So, that means I'll get either plus or minus infinity. I know this one will converge. So, that means I'll get a real number. Then when it comes here, here we have 1 over x power half. You see, half is in, in this interval, right? So, that means this will also diverge. And here, p is equal to 3. So this is what converge. And from our first lesson, you could see that when we evaluated this, we had infinity. And when we evaluated this, I think we had 1 or minus 1, 1 of it, right? So, yes, you can see that, yes. So this diverge and this convergence. So we have been able to use the P-series to do this, and it's very, very simple. So... For instance, when you have MCQs and you're asked to show whether um, maybe which of the following improper integrals converge or diverges and the rest, if they follow the form of the P series, you don't need to evaluate the integrals, okay? You can just use this test to be able to tell which of them converges and which of them diverge, okay? So let's talk about the second test, which is comparison test 
So here what we do is that, as the name suggests, we compare two functions and we have some rules in doing them. Okay. So we compare two functions. If we are able to establish that the bigger one converges, then it implies that the smaller one will also converge. If we are also able to establish that the smaller one diverges, then what it means then what it means is that the bigger one will also diverge. Okay, but note something: the converse of these two statements are not true. So that means that if the smaller one converges, that doesn't mean that the bigger one will converge. And if the bigger one diverges, that doesn't mean the smaller one will diverge. No, okay, right. So please take good notice of these two statements. They are very, very important. We come to apply them. So examples, we are to determine if the following integrals are convergent or divergent. Okay, so we have these three. Okay, so if you don't use these tests, the only way to do that is to what? evaluate them. And you know, evaluating them will be somehow tedious or yes. So that's the reason why we have this test to be able to help us to easily know whether our improper integrals are divergent or convergent. Okay, so let's take the first one. We're going to use a comparison test. So when you take the first one, we can compare it to 1 over s squared. Okay. And this here, cos s cos squared x over s squared will always be less than or equal to one over s squared. Do you know why? Okay, you see the values that cos takes run between what negative one to what one. All right. So what it means is that. You see the denominator is still the same, right? So when cos takes one or negative one, that's the only case when you have the value here being equal to the value here. Other than that, everything that you get will be lesser than what? One over s squared, right? So that means that cos squared x over s squared is less than or equal to one over s squared, right? So you see this one is the bigger one, one over s squared. This one is the smaller one. So if we are able to establish that the bigger one converges, then what it means is that the smaller one will also want to converge. Okay, so as like I said, we compare these two. And know that 1 over s squared is bigger than cos squared x. I just explained to you. So if we are to show that this converges, then it means that the smaller one will also want to converge. And we know that from the P series, you know the P is equal to 2 here. Right, and since it is greater than one, it means that this converges, and as a result of that, it implies that this will also converge. Yes, very simple, right? Uh -huh. So, this is how we use a comparison test to test for convergence. It's very, very simple. Okay, so let's do the second one. So, you see, with the second question, too, when we have 1 over x plus e x and this will always be less than or less than 1 over x yes and the reason why it is so is because you know the denominator here is bigger than that here so as a result of that the numbers here will always be smaller than those here okay so here you can see that 1 over x is the bigger one here so the only thing that we can infer from here is that if 1 over x is convergent, since the bigger one, then I mean the smaller one will also be what's convergent. But we all know that 1 over x per the words P series test is what divergent because here P is equal to 1. Okay, and since the I told you that the converse of these two statements is not correct, right? So you could see that 
coming where is it you can see that one over x is the bigger one here and it diverges that wouldn't imply that this one was what diverge no so that means that using this the test has failed so we have to use a different one okay so we compare 1 over x plus ex to 1 over ex okay and here this is also the bigger one because you know with the denominator this is always larger than this and so this will give you something smaller than this so if you're able to show that the bigger one here converges then it will imply that the smaller one here will also converge so how do we show that this one converges so we can evaluate it okay so integral from 3 to infinity 1 over es dx so evaluating this by now you should know right this is a this is now a type 1 this is a type 1 um improper integral so you should learn how to evaluate it so we set the limit as t approaches infinity integral from 3 to t minus x dx when you integrate this you get this limit of integration 3 to t when you put in your limit of integration you get this then when you take this and this you get plus then when you put in your limit of integration as t approaches infinity you get this and that and i told you e minus infinity is what zero and here it is minus minus zero is the same as zero so you get 0 plus e minus 3 here, which is e minus 3, which is called 0 0.0497. So you can see that this here is a real number, right? So that means that this here converges, right? As a result of that, the smaller one, which is this, will also converge. So we've been able to show that, yes, this one converges using the comparison test. Then we the last one, which is very simple. So um there's a question here. So we can compare this here to one of our roots x, and you can see that here this denominator is the denominator here is smaller because we have minus half here, but we don't have anything here, so that means that this will always be bigger than what this so if we are able to show that the smaller one was diverges then it means that the bigger one will also was diverge that's what the second statement says okay so you know one over root of x is the same as one over x power half and here p is equal to half which is less than one so it implies that yes this one here diverges and since it's the smaller here since the smaller here diverges, it means the bigger one will also diverge, okay? So, it means this here diverges, okay? So, yes, that's how we use a comparison test as well to be able to tell whether an integral, an improper integral converges or diverges, okay? So, we'll be now moving on to Laplace transforms, okay? So, yes some videos will be uploaded on laplace transform for you okay and um, you know laplace transforms are used for solving differential equations okay and god will in next semester you'll be learning how to use laplace transform to solve differential equations in differential equations too but for now you also learn how to use that to solve differential equations in mass methods too just that you will not go very deep into it okay so these the next series of videos are going to take you through that okay and um, all the best through that and after that we move on to beta and gamma functions okay so all the best and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos don't forget to like the video if it helps you and see you in the next video thank you